Hello and welcome to the February edition of Turf Moor. As the Clarets prepare for a trip to Sellers Park to face Crystal Palace this weekend, we have another packed show for you. Radio 1 presenter and Clarets fan Jordan North catches up with Phil Bird and the love for his happy place. It's all fun and games with Burnley FC women's Megan Dykes and Sarah Agger as they share their journey to training and matches. Clarets superfan Reese shares his favourite turf memory from his time supporting the club. And we talked to Aaron Lennon on reaching his milestone of 400 Premier League appearances. But first we kick off with eSports as players battle it out on FIFA 22 to decide who will represent Burnley at the E-Premier League Grand Finals next month. We feel very strongly about the eSports world. Um, you know, as new owners, there's a lot that we want to actually add here, so we thank you all for being part of this. Morning everybody, and welcome to Burnley Football Club. I'd just like to congratulate you all for getting here. I don't know you've been through like seven online tournaments and one online playoff to get here. Hello and welcome to the Burnley FC's E Premier League Club Playoff. My name is Liam Waddington, aka Fizzer, and I'm joined alongside by the beautiful FIFA analyst. How are you doing? It's been quite a bit beautiful all day. I am getting a little bit worried, but I'm doing very well, Fizzer. How are you? I think it's been great, especially uh, meeting a bunch of the, the players here today. We know how much it means to them and we know how much that you know, we, as presenters, commentators, we try and do the best job we possibly can. And we know that what's on the line today is to represent Burnley Football Club. And it's a big moment for a lot of people who are Burnley fans. And it's been a great day so far, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. Like you said, obviously, some of these players here support Burnley themselves, so it means a lot to them to, to go ahead and compete and put on a show and perform. They put in so many hours, so much time and practice that when they get to these tournaments, they really want to shine, and we've seen some great FIFA. I think just to, to say to your friends that, yeah, I, I represent Burnley is so yeah. important, because I know that if I, was, if I was that good at FIFA, this would be the first thing I'd be going for. I, you might need no competitors, though, for you to be able to win it, eh? Yeah, you're not wrong with that. That's a shot. Oh, yeah. That is it. Back to the net. Brad Carson versus Will, World Cup 2004. Both Burnley lads, both Burnley fans. Still going for another goal. Great ball, Adorma. Switch, that is, I mean, round of applause. Brad Colston is an Xbox Grand Final champion representing Burnley Football Club in the E Premier League. A little bit of press there. He's got a chance. Can he look for that pass into Hullet? He does. Goes for that shot. Here we go. He's on that near post. 77th minute. Give a shot to Hullet. And there you go. After four games of FIFA, we are still not done here. And we want goal to Golden Goal. Taking a bit of time. Goes that pass onto the edge of the 18 yard box. Managers getting that's right. Lays on the cross. Nice. And there you have it. Come on. Come on. That is absolutely oh. blue up yeah. here. And Josh has done it. That is a massive, massive goal. And commiserations to Ashi. Tried last year, got to the final. So we're trying FGS stuff, but to finally actually make an event, and especially alongside Colston, would be really good. Mm. So, now we've got for the Xbox, Brad Colston. <laughs> Burnley Josh.
Some brilliant esports action there, and we look forward to seeing what the E Premier League Grand Finals bring next month. Now, switching to someone who is all too familiar to our screens, Radio 1 presenter and I'm a Celebrity star, Jordan North, recently caught up with Phil Bird at the Arsenal game. Great. Nil nil first half. At half time. Oh, We're going to let Alistair go and get himself. Okay, mate, do you want a cup of tea? Oh, no, yeah. I'm all right. I'm I'll, all right, thank you. I'll, I'll nip out if I get a chance. Yes, well, he'll bring you one back. Oh, thank he'll you. He'll bring you one back. Coffee will be great. There's any uh, sandwich bags as well? Thank you. <laughs> it's full order. Is it? You do right, you do right. Why not? The amount of stick he gives me on Twitter. Give you a bit of a battle back and forth. Yeah, they're all good. Burnley's friendly most banter. famous. It's fan. actually the first time we've met today. Is that we, right? We spoke on the phone. I've been on his podcast and oh, spoke brilliant. many times. So it's first time we met, but yeah, brilliant, brilliant. I was going to ask you a little bit about your, 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 you know, your time as a Burnley fan. Do you remember your first Burnley game? Yeah, it was against Scunthorpe, and I think Chris <laughs> Waddle was a manager. Was I it? Think. Yeah. Yeah. So that would have been '97. Right. Yes. Yeah. 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 So that was my first game. I think we won. Because well. you were born away from from the town, weren't you? Yeah. So um, my dad was in the army. Yes. So we moved around. All my family's from there. I spent Christmas at Burnley, and I, I, I used to spend every Christmas and summer back back at Burnley. It was always we always called it home back home. Um, so yeah, um, I was I was actually born in York, but we lived in Northern Ireland. We lived in Germany, all parts of wow, parts of Europe. Because a few people go, even from Burnley. I never went to school in this. Well, I went to school in Burnley for a bit but then we moved again yes yeah yeah I, I mean what's your most memorable moment um, following Burnley I've, for me the, the playoff final watching against Sheffield United I mean I've seen that Wade Elliott goal a million and one times thank you yes coffee there yeah oh and a sandwich, and a sandwich bag, bag. Um, um, but that, that was a that was a great game. It was a fantastic I, game. Also, also, do you know what? I never thought we were going to lose that day. Did you? I, th I think that when we beat Blackburn at Ewood Park for the first time yes. in what yes. since thirty odd years. Yeah, was came it? from one 0 down to win came two from one. Yeah, one 0 down to win two one. You know that was that was a f that season we beat them twice. I think didn't we? Um, at home and away. I, I again. A big game for me was when I knew when we last got promoted when we beat uh, Preston North End on the Friday night Joey Barton scored yeah, the free away kick end the was away end. Wasn't it? I have yeah. never seen or been on a Burnley away end like that and I knew that after that game I thought we're going up late into a secret there I hadn't pressed record oh it was an early goal wasn't it yeah so we didn't have my commentary no, on no oh it's easily done I think I was probably that nervous I was probably that nervous we won 1-0 it's a great free kick if you remember that because I think that week we drew with Middlesbrough and if we'd lost against behind. Preston we could have gone yeah. into the playoffs yeah I mean we won. I, I was struggling that week with a, a sort of throat infection that I was trying to, yeah. trying to get rid of and I, I was struggling to get through 90 minutes I bet and the Middlesbrough game was the loudest I've ever heard Turf James Argrees yeah it that was, rocked it when really that Michael did. Keane equaliser went in and um, every time I see Michael Keane he reminds me of that day and the atmosphere at Turf Moor to come back and draw 1-1 against our uh, promotion rivals wasn't it yeah they were that was again there's so many games when you look back you look back some more Premier League games off the first time we beat Man United that Robbie Blake goal yes. that always yes. stands out for me yes I thought yeah. that I was in the cricket field stand and I honestly thought it was going to collapse it did was you, it, it, you speak to anyone I mean, there what was, a volley I mean I know Maxwell's Maxwell's had a go at one or two of them <laughs> yeah. he recently <laughs> he but he, he still stands out doesn't he yeah. it's a, a special special goal definitely first goal in the Premier League and it was Robbie it was Blake. special wasn't yeah. it it was uh, at Turf Moor, where, where do you normally sit at Turf uh, So I, I always, when I was younger, I always had uh, season tickets in Jimmy McUpper. And then towards the past few years, I like to go in the cricket field end. Uh, do you? Yeah, so I go in there with my uncle and my cousin. Uh, it's a good atmosphere, you know, you get to Rival up. fans. Yeah, and, yeah rival yeah, fans. Yeah. And it's just, and we always um, just got good memories of being in there. So I do tend to go in there. I mean... What a whirlwind for years it's been for you, hasn't it? Uh, it's been, Radio yeah. One. It's been I'm a, a celebrity, get me out of yeah, here. Yeah, it's you been know? a mad year. I'm not sure how you didn't win it that year, by the way. But. A, lot of, a few people have said that to me. <laughs> but, um, you know, honestly, I've said it before. I, I genuinely thought I was going to come out first or second. Did especially, you really? Yeah, especially when everyone was voting for me for those trials and I was sick on that cliff. I honestly thought I was going to come out first or second. So, to get to the final. And G was a, a worthy winner. She really was. She's, she's a 
Lovely lovely girl. Girl. I still yeah. speak to all the two guys. You? Yeah, we're all do in a you? WhatsApp group. I mean, you've done some TV with Beverly Callard, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I spoke to Beverly. We text each other pretty much every day. Wow. Sp- spoke to us. So, yeah, we're all good friends and we all speak to each other and see each other. So, I can't complain. Yeah, yeah, and you're doing well on the drive time. Yeah, so me and, and Vic, Vic it's yeah. just, uh, we're really lucky, Phil, because we get You've to got me back on Radio 1 anyway, However, listening to Radio 1. Oh, yeah. good, yeah. good. There's, there can be a battle at times, but we're, we're back on Radio 1 oh, when you're on. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, but it's, we're just lucky because I look forward to going into work every day. I, I get paid to have a laugh. And Play records. It's, it's the best job in the you world. You must have a, an encyclopedic knowledge of, of music. Yeah, we, I'm, I'm not, it's, it, it's one of those, though, for a, a pub quiz or playing quiz games around Christmas time and music comes up, I always feel extra pressure because everybody <laughs> expects me to know it and I'm like, I should know it. And you'll always get, you call yourself a DJ. You can always get caught out, can't All you? All the time, yeah. It's a bit like football, isn't it? It is, you, you yeah. Know, you can go to the breadth of the uh, subject and find something to catch out on. Yeah. We're just about, I think, to get underway in the second half. The teams are back. Thanks for that, Jordan. No bother. I'll have a look at this sandwich bag. See what he's brought you. What he's brought you. Mm. Do you want to? It's nil nil here. And uh, we're back underway. The start of the second half. And you may have seen that Jordan announced earlier this week that he'd be rowing 100 miles between London and Burnley in support of Comic Relief. We wish him the best of luck and we'll be keeping a close eye on his progress. Now, kicking off our Turf Memories series in association with the Alzheimer's Society is lifelong Burnley fan Rhys Folds as he recalls his favourite Turf memory. So, a special memory for me supporting Burnley Football Club was the 2013-14 season where we got our first promotion under Sean Dyche. Now, at the start of the season, it was um, Sean Dyche's first full season, so there was excitement within the fans to see how it would go, and we made such a good start, and I was kind of getting a bit excited, kind of thinking, all right, okay, let's see how it goes, and then it kept on progressing and progressing, and I thought, oh, we might be able to do something here. And for me personally, um, I went to a college in Blackburn called St Mary's, so quite a lot of my close friends were uh, supported our friends down the road at Blackburn Rovers. So it was, uh, as the season progressed, it looked like we were going to go up. Um, it was more exciting, obviously having banter between my friends. And of course, um, I have two real special memories from that season. Um, the first one was when we won away at Ewood Park. Um, the first time in 35 years and the build up during the week all my friends at college we were thinking about how the game would go and I was just so nervous because Blackwood had this thing over us where we just couldn't quite beat them and then just to win that game it was just superb I remember I went on the game with my auntie just the celebrations afterwards it was just such a great feeling and then the second game and I think my favourite game from that season was the uh, Wigan Athletic game at home um, when we sealed the promotion, um, I just couldn't believe it. Like there was, there were a few games before that where it looked like we could have maybe quite, we could have sealed the promotion, but we just lost or drew. But we knew before that game, if we won, then we was up. And then just to win that game, I remember like Ashley Barnes' goal. It was such a good team goal from start from Tommy at the back, um, and then he finished it off Ashley Barnes. And then just for me, like after the game as well. Um, the celebrations when all the fans ran on the pitch. Um, like me personally, like my dad, he was a massive Burnley fan, but like sadly he passed away quite a few years ago. And I just know like he would have been there. It's just so happy to see Burnley get promoted again. And then I remember there was just a moment I ran on the pitch, and um, there's a photo I still have now. I was in the centre circle, and I just kind of like sat down on my knees in the centre circle and just looked up to the sky and I just knew my dad would be thinking of me there and he'd just be so proud of Burnley and like I say that's a shirt from this season and I think the following week I went to the Player of the Year Awards I managed to get all the players to sign this shirt and this is just a shirt that I'll keep with me forever and it was just such a special time to be a Burnley fan and something I'll always look back on with good memories. Thank you to Reese for sharing such a touching story. If you would like to share your turf memory with us, email marketing at burnleyfc.com and we'll be in touch. 
Now, switching to the women's side with Megan Dykes and Sarah Agger as we join the players on their commute in the first of our AstroPay Carpool Kick series. Hi guys, Hi guys and welcome, welcome to AstroPay's Astro Carpool Kicks. <laughs> Let's go. Belts off, safety first. not hit any kids. <laughs> Feel like I'm on my driving test. <laughs> what, did, what did you get given on your driving test? No, I got, I think, three minors. Did I you? passed with flying colours, what, me, Sarah. What did you have to do? Padlow Park? Um, no, reverse round the corner. I only had to emergency oh, brake as well. I think that's quite a hard emergency one. Emergency stop, sorry. So yeah, like Pure emergency slam emergency on, stop. don't you? Yeah. The question is, what have you had for your recce then this morning? Is it anything that you know, okay. like <clears throat> all the time? Do you have the same Not breakfast all routine? All the time, so we have a porridge, toast with jam on it, but today, treated ourselves. Fruit little Starbucks. Toast. <laughs> fruit toast, the courtesy of yeah. Sir Aga. Yeah. And fruit toast from Starbucks, butter, jam, caramel. I mean, you're good to go. Butter. Yeah. yeah. Talking about jams. Do you have certain music that gets you going for the game? Oof, I love that. Yeah. So, right, I am the DJ in the in the changing room, but the thing is, we've got that many eras, like that many, like <laughs> we've got Mel and Lizzie who listen got, to club lands. Yeah. We've got Dom and like, Millie. I don't, I don't know what. Dom and Millie. On the okay, there. theirs is all right. To be fair, theirs is like what I'd sort of listen to. Liv Wilson. And then you've got Liv Wilson who listens to oh, probably listen to. like I can almost see it again, like before a game. Like it's just no, and yeah. then you got me who actually puts on good music and everyone slates it. <laughs> no, but if I was to sing a karaoke song, what would it be? Now this is our test between our our friendship here. So if I was to get on stage karaoke, what would my song be, Sarah? Love on top by Beyonce. Oh, she's done it. She's got it. <laughs> Baby, you're the one. <laughs> Baby, Baby, you're the one. I'm not I even gonna. <laughs> yes. Wait there. I'm need to attack. just need to test me once. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's not even get. Oof, that heated seat is a bit hot now. No, I'm sweating. Get a bit. No, I'm gonna sneeze. Say banana. Pineapple. Banana, banana. Pineapple. 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 Say pineapple. Pineapple. And, you know if you say pineapple. Pineapple. It goes. Tell me that hasn't gone. Yeah, it's actually gone. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually. See, gone. if you didn't know that, if you're about to sneeze, you say pineapple or banana. Who is? Mm, who's the mum of the team? Like, who's the mum of the team? I feel like Lars is. It's it gotta is be Lars. Yeah. yeah. Got to be Lars. And yeah. I've got a good idea. <laughs> Why don't we pr try and prank call Lars? Get her up. How would you Get prank call someone? How many, how many rings? If she doesn't answer, it's gotta be Katie. I don't, no, I don't think she answers. Katie, Katie um, so Katie was, it was supposed to be the three musketeers today, but Katie, um, Katie bottled it. Yeah. Big shout out to Katie though. <laughs> Hello. Hiya, is that the Burnley FC captain? <laughs> Who's that? I was just wondering, um, I'm coming to watch your game today. Megan died. <laughs> 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 oh, no way, that was poor from me. We're just <laughs> um, you live on carpool ca uh, carpool karaoke. Oh. Yeah, you live on our carpool. Lads, say hi. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to phone someone else because you're doing that, lads. Too good at guessing. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but too you, switched on, aren't I? yeah, too switched on. But listen, you drive safe, and we'll see you there. Yeah, you've had too much time now on our carpool karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> we spent about half an hour trying to dial in one four one at the start of the number. <laughs> I was like, I never normally answer these phone calls. I know, because Sarah was like, she's not going to answer. She's never going to answer. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. Okay, well, I'll see you there. Right. See you soon, Lars. Go on, Lars. See you. Bye. 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 That was terrible. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> oh like, even when like, she answered the phone, I was she, like, she already knows. That's Megan. <laughs> well, how about you do it to Katie then? You do it to Katie. Get Katie on the phone. How many rings? I'm saying. Sh sh two. 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 You're free. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello there. Is that Katie? <laughs> Who's that? Hello, Katie. I'm a fan. Who is it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Katie! 
Are you, are you okay? It's me. That's why I went, hello, because no, that's you. <laughs> Oh we've, my word! We've just, we've just prank called Lars and Megan was terrible. No, she was just so, a, a good guesser. You're live, by the way, on our Astro Pay Carpool Kicks. Oh yeah, you're live. Katie, say hi. Hi! <laughs> Katie, so, do you know because you haven't come on this with us? Yeah. You've got to sing a song. Baby, you're the one that I love. love. Baby, Baby, you're the one that I need. Baby, you're the one that I need. Come on, baby, it's you. <laughs> Katie, we're about two minutes away, so we'll meet you there, shall we? Alright, Yeah, be you. there or be square. You've had your few or minutes of fame. <laughs> You've had your few Bye. minutes of fame. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Katie. Oh. oh she she gave us, yeah. That was a good phone call, because we didn't even know the lyrics anyway. I feel that like we're so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm up for today, let me tell you that. Up the clarets. Up the clarets. <laughs> we are. Yeah! Is it arriving? Where are you? Why did we arriving at Arriving at destination. We're actually arriving in the... De oh, oh. Watch pot them tyres, Meg. Pothole. It, it is an off-road, I like, but... <laughs> I mean... We are arriving and we've arrived. Do you get nervous, Meg, before the game? Yeah, but I think I rein it in a bit. So we're at the lovely Coppel United against Charlie today in the Lancashire Cup. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Woo! I hope you enjoyed it. God. <laughs> God. But no, I'm looking forward to today. My granddad's coming today. Oh, that's nice. Grandma and granddad. Oh. Got the whole whole fans coming. Yeah. I've just been thinking there's no um there's no stand, is no, there? No, there's no stand. Just gonna have to bring a chair. After 73 appearances across two spells for the club, former England international Aaron Lennon marked his 400th Premier League appearance against Liverpool earlier this month. We caught up with him to talk about reaching that incredible milestone. So Aaron, 400 Premier League appearances, got at Brighton last week and you know, playing week in, week out for the club, you must be really happy on how things are going. Yeah, no. Nah, um, like I said, it was always nice to hit like the 400 back. I didn't actually know until I did an interview the week before. The guy mentioned it to me. Um, so yeah, like I said, I said it in, on the weekend. I don't really look back, but I will at one day. But now, nah, 400 is um, a massive achievement for myself. But um, yeah, to be playing and like I said, more importantly, to get the win was massive for us at the weekend. Um, we've been playing really well, and uh, we got the result. I think we deserved, and it gives us a lot of confidence going into the next ones now. You grew up in Leeds and you made your debut for Leeds at 16, becoming yeah. the youngest ever Premier League player. It was crazy for me, like I said, I came out of school and straight away I was pretty much around the first team, um, so I was really young still. And it just escalated so quickly, like I said, I went on pre-season with the first team, did quite well. And all of a sudden, I think it was the first or second game of the season possibly, and um, I was on a bench and obviously I made debut at 16 years old. And um, no, it just went from there really. Um, it was a special moment for me, obviously playing for my hometown. And then you actually played at Turf Moor at 17 year old. I don't know how much you did that day, you remember? Yeah. Um, for Leeds, you set up um, Gilfie Arneson as well for a goal. I remember actually setting up the goal. Um, I think he scored a header, I think. Yeah. Um, but I, um, like I said, I remember coming to Turf. Um, I don't remember that game that much, but like I, said, I remember the game a little bit, but not too much now. And uh, that summer, you then left Leeds to join Tottenham. Yeah. Um, moving to London at a very young age. Well, Leeds was in um, financial trouble, um, so there was pretty much everyone had to pretty much go. Anyone who was um, a talent or anyone on bigger wages, like some of the older players, was literally out of the club. Um, Leeds were really struggling. Um, at the time, I actually didn't want to leave. Um, but yeah, going to um, Tottenham came up, and it was one of them. It was like they're buying all the uh, top young players at the time, and um, like I said, it was. Um, now it's worked out, it was a great move for me. And your th first goal came about Birmingham City away. Many yeah. memories from that one? I do remember that, yeah. It was funny enough because we were was, we was talking about it just before. Um, we were a lot of the lads that were saying it's coming, it's coming. I'd, I'd been close a few of the weeks before. Um, and I remember coming inside and hitting it with my left. It was a very special moment. 
got many memorable moments out of Spurs, I imagine, for yourself, but the last minute equaliser at the Emirates against Arsenal, does, yeah. is that one of the standouts for you? Uh, yeah, yeah it's definitely one, but like I said, it was um, always it was a great game against the Arsenal. Obviously, the, the big rivalries, and um, like I said, we was, uh, we was actually getting battered in that game and um, far too down at one point. And then always a uh, last minute equaliser away from home against your biggest rivals is always uh, very special. And quite a special start from your time at White Hart Lane. You scored 26 Premier League goals for Tottenham. Yeah. You never actually lost a game in which you scored in. Yeah, no, I should have scored more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, I remember people saying that if I scored, once we scored, they say, oh, we've won now, we've won. <laughs> so every time I scored earlier, they'd say, oh, don't worry, we've won. But um, yeah, no, yeah, it's a crazy little stat. But um, yeah, like I said, I probably should have scored a lot more. And Going on to the international front, 21 caps for England. Yeah. Uh, you played two World Cups. Just yeah. how much of a, a proud sort of honour is that to do that for your country? Nah, massive. Like I said, um, as a young boy, I was playing in like, the England youth teams coming through and you always one day want to represent your country. And um, like I said, I did that at such a young age and obviously going to the World Cups um, was, like I said, it's one of my, probably the highlight of my career, um, especially the first one being so young and the whole occasion, everything to go around it was um, very, very special. You mentioned the first World Cup, you, you replaced David Beckham as a substitute in that World Cup. Yeah. You played alongside the likes of Luka Modric, Steven Gerrard, Gareth Bale, Harry Kane. Yeah. Is there any sort of players that stand out above the best of the rest? Or is there uh, any... Like I said, the ones you just mentioned, they're all, like I said, world, world class players. Uh, Wayne Rooney is another. Um, but now I've played with so many, like I said, the, the list is very long. Um, but like I said, um, it's been a privilege to play with all of them. Um, there's nothing better than playing with them type of players. And then moved to Everton, came about uh, originally on loan before joining on, on a permanent. Was it sort of a special moment to play at, like a historic club and, and move on to a club like Everton at the time? Was it the right, right time for you? It was, yeah. Um, I went on loan previously, so while I was still at Tottenham, and that went really well. And from the loan move, I pretty much knew that was a club I wanted to go to. Um, and yeah, like I said, um, Martinez was a top, top manager. I loved working with him. It's a great football club, a great family club, um, very close-knit group. Um, and yeah, now it's a good few years there. And then the move to Burnley came about January um, 2018. You made your debut against Newcastle. Again, was it the right time for you and the right club for you to move on to? Yeah, no, it was. Like I said, um, it's a bit similar, like I said, uh, as in like family club, every close-knit, close group. I felt like a bit out of favour at Everton and I just wanted to be playing. And um, I remember coming down here, meeting the manager. And um, now it was the right one. Like I said, um, I've enjoyed every moment um, since I've been here. Your first goal for Burnley then came about September uh, 2018 against Bournemouth 4 0. Yeah. Was that nice for you to get off the mark and, and get a goal for another club? Uh, yeah, it's always nice to score. Like I said, I'm, I've always been winning. It doesn't matter to me who scores. I'm just more bothered about the team winning. Uh, I've always been a like, very un, like, unselfish player. I always, I always care about the team winning. Uh, I think Yoey may have crossed it and I got in at the far post with, and steal it across my left foot. And it was a massive result for that at the time. Um, a really good performance. And then you left the club in the summer of 2020, moved over to Turkey. Yeah. Bit of a different experience, playing in a new country and a new life for you? Uh, yeah, it was. Um, like I said, I didn't want to leave at the time, but obviously it was well documented, there was the stuff going on. Um, but actually worked out actually really good for me. Um, I always said I wanted to play abroad and I actually really, really enjoyed it. Um, different environment, different culture, um, different way of playing. Um, and obviously at the time I'd come back from like a knee injury here at Burnley, I wasn't playing as much. And um, just to go out there and get a full season of football under my belt, amazing, amazing experience for me, um, one I really, really enjoyed. And then you came back to the club, back for a second time? Yeah, like I said, um, I remember coming back in the summer, like I said, I uh, just had my little baby and um, we spoke to the family and decided, obviously, we wanted to be back in England. Obviously, I spoke with the gaffer, came up just to train, really, to stay fit. Um, and pretty much that escalated really quickly and he was like, we want to do something. And um, I, obviously, I jumped at it, I couldn't wait. Obviously, knowing the group, knowing how this club works and how it is, uh, it was the perfect one. And like I said, then pretty much I was straight involved. Obviously, then like I said, making a second debut for, against Newcastle again. And then Liverpool uh, a couple of weeks ago, your 400 Premier League parents. Yeah. Also coming up against James Milner, who was in the side. I think when you made your debut for Leeds as well. There's not probably not many players that have done it. I think they said 40. I was 40th maybe. 40th player so, to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a big achievement. And obviously, we've seen James and that. I said I think he's a good few ahead of me to be fair to him. He's some pro. Uh, but now, like I said, James, we came through as uh, young boys together um, at Leeds. I think he's a year older than me, um, but a great lad, top pro, and uh, it was good to see him again. But like I said, uh, massive to hit the 400 mark, and hopefully a lot more to still come.
What a finish from Aaron Leonard. He celebrated 400 Premier League games last week. Well, he celebrated with a goal today. An amazing milestone there for Aaron Lennon. Congratulations from us all. And that's it for this month's show. Thanks for watching. As the Clarets prepare for a trip to Sellers Park, we look back at some magic moments from South London. See you soon. Nice and early, looking for Goodmanson. Might fall here for Goodmanson. Ooh, Trying yes. to kill out on his left foot. It's yes. Yeah, Bert yes. Goodmanson for Burnley. Neil to deliver, swings it in, good ball in there, and one yes. it's 2-0. Yeah, yeah. Jay Rodriguez with it. Oh, great little run from Matt Lowton, taking men on okay. here. Ball inside, looking for Rodriguez, looking to get it back for Lowton, going to hit it. Oh, oh. he can! What a oh. goal from Matt Lowton! Oh. Tokoski's towards the far post, swung in by Westwood. Had a one, and it's in! Oh. Burnley scored! Yes. Diving header, yes. it's the skipper, isn't it? Ben yes. I think. Yes, it is. Ben Mee with the diving header, in off the post. Maybe the keeper got a touch to it. Well, great on the chase here. He could seal the game, perhaps. Into the box, Andre Gray. Finishing Andre Gray. Yes! Burnley! Woo! Up at Sellers Park on Andre Gray. Meat and drink for him. A massive goal for the Clarence.